Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about percutaneous nephrostomy and ureteral stenting, also known as double J stent, let's get started. The percutaneous nephrostomy refers to an external drainage catheter, placed via a flank approach, positioned in the renal pelvis, and the ureteral stenting is the procedure to place a thin, flexible plastic tube that is temporarily in the ureter to help urine drain from the kidney into the bladder in the case of a blockage. The ureters carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder. Now let's see what are the indications and contraindications of nephrostomy and ureteral stenting. The indications of nephrostomy and ureteral stenting are obstructive uropathy including ureteral obstruction from iatrogenic and the neoplastic or inflammatory causes, then urinary diversion, and access for percutaneous intervention. The contraindications of nephrostomy and ureteral stenting are uncorrectable coagulopathy, and specific to anti-grade ureteral stents, they are like untreated bladder outlet obstruction and untreated urinary tract infection, then bladder fistula. Now let's move on to the procedure of anti-grade ureteral stent placement. We're going to see how it is done in the interventional areas. The anti-grade ureteral stents are reserved for patients with functioning native bladders. It is common to wait at least one week following placement of a nephrostomy tube before stent placement. To decrease the risk of clot or debris occluding the lumen of the stent. First the patient positioning. The prone position or prone oblique position is given when possible, and the fluoroscopy or ultrasound are used to determine an appropriate access site, then the area is prepared and draped. After that, the skin entry site is along the ipsilateral posterior axillary line, preferably below the 11th rib to avoid entering the thorax. A subcostal approach is most comfortable for patients. And then, administering local anesthesia at the chosen skin entry site. After that, making a small skin incision through the dermis to facilitate catheter passage, in this case there is a nephroiderostomy already in place, so passing a guide wire through the catheter into the bladder. Then the length of the ureter can be measured by passing a Teflon-coated guide wire through the catheter into the bladder. After that, withdrawing the guide wire tip to the intended position of the proximal loop of the stent, and placing a second clamp on the guide wire at the skin surface. The distance between clamps is the desired stent length. Stents are sized in centimeters, 22 to 28 centimeters, by the distance between the pigtail or J-curves. Now placing an Amplat super stiff guide wire in the bladder. After that, placing the stent on the guide wire and advancing over the wire down the ureter into the bladder depending on the type of stent being deployed. It may be pre-mounted on a long delivery system or may need to be advanced by using a stiff pusher mounted on the guide wire behind the stent. Now the tip of the stent is beyond the ureteral orifice of the bladder, retracting the guide wire and the flexible stiffener. After that, the distal loop of the stent will then coil and free in the bladder, if the stent has been measured properly. Then the proximal loop will form within the renal pelvis when the guide wire and stiffener are removed. If there is very tight or hard strictures will not allow soft ureteral stents to pass easily. In this case, the stricture may be widened by passage of a Van Andel Teflon dilator over the wire, diameter larger than the stent to be placed, usually 8 French or 10 French, into the ureter. Otherwise the balloon ureteroplasty performed to dilate, the stricture prior to stent placement, leaving the nephrostomy tube until stent patency is confirmed. Then the loop of the nephrostomy is formed adjacent to the proximal loop of the ureteral stent. After that, the nephrostomy tube can be capped for a physiologic trial so that drainage is internal through the stent. After the stent placement, the patient passes the physiologic trial of a capped nephrostomy, after the trail, the nephrostomy can be removed. In final, an anti-grade contrast study may first be performed to document stent patency. That's all for today, have a great day, thank you.